Way back in 2000, I was a bored 15-year-old girl and began exploring AOL chat rooms. I had recently left public school and moved to a new city that I'd never more than passed through and so, I was a bit lonely. I thought it would be cool if I could link up with people around my age in my new area. I've always been very cautious with my personal info, so I wasn't too worried about anything bad happening. I ended up meeting my BF through one of the chat rooms. Things moved quickly and I was soon pregnant and engaged. We got our own place. Life was good. We still used him to message each other when he was at work and frequently, we would also chat with our friends in the chat rooms. Some of my old online contacts would message from time to time but honestly, I mainly chatted with people I knew I art out. When our son was about 6 months old, we moved into a larger apartment. My fiancé, Jake, began working long shifts and so I was home alone a lot with the baby. One evening I was in a chat with a friend, when someone else sent me an IM. I wasn't sure who it was but she began casually chatting with me and it seemed remotely normal. At first, I was still confused as to who this was and so she sent me a photo. She didn't look familiar. I continued the conversation because I started to think maybe my fiancé and a friend were just messing with me because he liked to joke around like that but after a bit of dull, awkward conversation and my refusing to allow them to view my webcam, this person sends me a photo of a middle-aged man. Confused, I asked who it was and why they sent it. They gave me some line like, oh, that's my friend John. Don't you think he's handsome? I immediately knew that this wasn't right or a joke from anyone I knew. It was clear that I'd been messaged by this guy all along, pretending to be another teenage girl. I initially cut off contact but after a couple days of thought, I was just creeped out and actually called and cancelled my AOL service. A week or so after this my brother-in-law, Mark, and his wife, Lynn moved in with us. It was early evening on a Friday and Mark, Lynn, and I were getting some food and drinks ready before Jake got home. I was in the kitchen and Mark was just a few feet away in the living room with Lynn. We were chatting and laughing when the phone rang. I answered the line in the kitchen. It was a man and he greeted me by my first name in a very creepy tone and seemed to be keeping his voice low. I had that feeling in the pit of my stomach that something was very wrong. I asked, who is this? Mark took notice and asked me who it was. He must have noticed the change in my tone because he glanced at me and then went straight into his room to pick up the other line and listen. The man on the phone must have heard Mark because he then said to me, well, I see you have company, in a pretty disgruntled tone and then he quickly hung up. I didn't have caller ID at the time, so we dialed asterisk 69 to get the number. When I called it back, it was a hotel in a neighboring city, about 15 minutes away. I asked the clerk who answered about the phone call I'd received but they informed me that there was no way to tell what room it was placed from. I knew it wasn't anyone I knew. My phone line was only active for a couple months at that point, was listed under my name but I'd only given it out to family and a few close friends. We didn't know what to make of it and as the night went on, it was forgotten. The week came and went. I'd received a couple calls from blocked numbers where no one responded but I tried to convince myself that I was simply worrying too much and that it was no big deal. We prepared for another weekend hanging out together. Again, Mark, Lynn and I were home and Jake was still at work. We needed a few things from the store so Mark volunteered to go get them while Lynn and I stayed in with the kids. Now, the small building we lived in had three apartments on the lower level, side by side and three units above on the upper level. Kind of like a motel. Our unit was the last to the right on the lower level and the furthest from the parking lot. When you exit our apartment to make your way to the parking lot, you walk down a cement walkway and past the other two lower apartments. When you get to the end of the building, there's an area between the deck staircase to the upper level and the building, where a couple bicycles were stored. This is the only residential property in that area and the surrounding businesses slash offices were closed at this time of the evening. Mark exited the apartment but came running back in just a few moments later. 
he asked me if I was expecting more company. When I told him no, he told me this. When he had began walking past the other apartments and to the lot, a man dressed in dark clothing with a hood on, had snuck out of the bicycle area and began walking towards our apartment with his head down. Once he noticed Mark coming straight towards him, he turned and ran. Mark chased him into the lot but the guy took off and into the darkness and he lost him. We all just sat nervously for a few minutes because we were all thinking the same thing. That it was the man who called me and that that man was the girl from the chat room. I just have no clue how he would have found out my number unless maybe I'd given it to someone previously, thinking that they were someone else but really it was him. I don't know how advanced people's hacking skills were back then and if they could have found out my info through my AOL service but I definitely regretted chatting away my boredom. After this, we moved to a different town and I never listed a landline number in my name again and definitely never went back into those chat rooms. So, yeah. Whoever you were, let's not meet.